can't even know. Secret love. Why can't we tell somebody? Your secret love never lasts that long. Your secret love. I can't be no secret, baby. It's breaking my heart. Oh, secret love. Why can't we tell somebody your secret love never lasts that long? Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. I guess that song just be fitting. For what I'm about to talk about. Welcome to this mental house with me. Your host, Khadija. Now, I'm sure a lot of y'all... Wait a minute. Before I get started, let me... I'll be so remiss to welcome uh, Tia Garrett, Larry Price, Faith Knitu, Clary Jones... Uh, Pastor Conquest Holloman. Hmm. Hmm. That's a catchy one. That's your first name, Conquest? Anyway, and Lawanda, 1955. Let me welcome y'all. I, I, I appreciate y'all subscribing to the channel. Appreciate y'all being out there. Um, and I want to give you an official welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Because I know I can get crazy sometimes. and <laughs> But I really appreciate y'all being out there, okay? Now, on with the show. I know a lot of y'all heard or saw the exchange between myself and a person that they... Um, God, I can't even think of his name right now. Uh, another content creator that popped up on uh, the video where I talked about Jeff Dahmer and the destruction that he did to Milwaukee and that I don't think we ever recovered from it. And I really mean that. Milwaukee has never freaking recovered from the freaking madness of Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't care what nobody say. Listen to me, okay? It's just as racist or maybe even worse, Okay? Um, the police department that loves to stick objects up people's rear ends and stick ink, uh, ink pens through their ears. And this is what they do when they arrest people. Um, so like I said, we've had a lot of drama since Jeffrey Dahmer and there has been no healing in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Since he did that shit. Okay? Now, I know a lot of y'all was kind of surprised. Because I was too. There was a person that hit me up. And I'm going to address that. Because a lot of y'all was emailing me going, hey, what's going on? This conversation is interesting. Because I guess those are the conversations I really need to have. Um, I found out that my father could possibly be um, the father of a person that's the same age as my daughter. Okay? Now, a lot of y'all know my father recently passed, and I've had a great relationship, um, at least early, with my father. And it wasn't until I became pregnant that he decided he didn't want to deal with me no more. Okay. Um, and so it was a lot of drama because he, there was this Arab by the name of Suleiman that he had uh, figured out that that would be the mate for me and all this other kind of crazy stuff that was, um, I guess, real in his head. But like I said, Religion had already split my family down the middle. I had already had a show, a, a taste of show business, 
and I was damn near and I was damn near thirty years old, so I couldn't. Um, if I can get back into the mindset and the feelings that I had when this happened, I couldn't even understand why it upset him so much, because I was like, dude, I'm grown. This is what I'm talking about, grown. And if boy, if this was these days, can you imagine? But he felt it was an embarrassment. He felt that I had betrayed the family and all these things that the man that I first, the first man I fell in love with, uh, the way he berated me at that point, I felt there was no uh, return in our relationship. So I think we would see each other periodically. He told me he's going to leave me out his will. Um, things of that nature, and enough of me, okay, because that's, you can go back and see those, oh, I don't even want to relive that part of it, because you can go back and see uh, some of those old videos when I talked about that, but what I do want to talk about is the young man that told me he was my brother, and apparently, my father did not have a relationship with him. He um, was trying to, is trying to sew up some loose ends to find out where he belong and who he is. Okay, and this, and this is what I want to hope I can touch home with some people that are going through this right now. Um, because even in our older ages, I mean, hell, we grandparents. Um, and it is still a little unnerving when somebody comes and says, hey, I'm related to you, and through your father, and the only person that you've ever been uh, associated with, with him, was uh, his marriage to my mother. Okay, so I don't know anything about another uh, situation. Um. And so, obviously, during the time when this situation was going on, and my father, look, he didn't fall from heaven. He from hell like the rest of us. But I want to talk about how people um, just don't present themselves the way they should. Okay? That's what this is. You know? And I don't, I have ultimate respect for my father. Um my father, I told you, is in the book, Milwaukee Selma of the North, and he's done a whole lot of work. He was a Muslim Mosque Incorporated. He was the uh, imam, the minister of that, uh, and then the Afro-American uni unity. My father worked real diligently with the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X way back in the 60s, okay? I was born... Uh, well, blah, 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 blah. but the fact of the matter is, so all the life that I knew about my father was, uh, and my family was surrounded by either Church of God in Christ from my mother, um, spiritualist from my father until he converted to the nation, which was in a very early part of the nation. So he is in the age group with. My father was 90 uh, a couple days ago. So he's in the age group with Louis X, I mean, Louis Farrakhan, and all the rest of these uh, ministers, who I remember some as growing up as a child. Because my father would take me every place. My father was a very hands on father. So when I first uh, saw the message from this young man, it said, I think we may be related. You're my sister. I was like, whoa, that's kind of bold, don't you think? <laughs> For you to come out. But as I looked at him, I said, oh, my God. Um, he looks like my relatives. But, you know, hey, I watch enough paternity court with Lauren Lake to know that that doesn't always uh, mean anything. So uh, a DNA is in order. And I did turn him uh, over to one of my brothers, you know, um, and they can continue to converse. And then my brother will let me know if, you know, how far 
we should go because if anything, I want to sew up every uh, hole for him. I want to make do whatever I can for my part to make him feel complete about knowing who he is. Um, my father was just a man, but he's he's a man that done some great things. Um, and we didn't always see eye to eye, but the love that I have for him, I've never as a child grew up and turned the light switch up and the lights didn't come on. Um, that's not my family's testimony. I never remember. I never saw a food stamp until I became an adult. Um, I can never remember not having food in my house. So, um, and I also knew like on Friday and Saturday mornings would be the time that my father would take us out, myself and my siblings. And just like clockwork, I grew up with a family night with a um a sense of pride, a sense of who I was, a sense of um where I fit in the universe and my purpose. So, you know, as you grow older, you, you 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 eat the meat and throw away the bone, but what I'm saying is I don't want to take some of the neg- negativity from my relationship with my father and expose that with this young man that's trying to find puzzle pieces to put himself together with where he fits. So that's why I thought my one of my other brothers would be, you know, more appropriate for him. Okay. Uh, later on, I haven't. I'm I'm fiercely loyal to my mother, even though she wouldn't know <laughs> right now what is going on. And I don't mean to laugh, but I mean she wouldn't. She wouldn't know right now. And nor would she care. But um, it's just some things that I know that during his last days, because you, re- you remember a lot of y'all, I, I uh, cared for him. After all that time, the full it came full circle again that he had to deal with me. Um, and, oh, the camera. Don't worry, y'all. It's going to get greater later. We're working on everything. So um, when it came full circle, now that this young uh, man is saying that, and it came full circle that I had to care for my father towards the end of his days, and I noticed that he kept on saying, I only got uh, four mm-hmm. kids, and I only had one wife. And, he, and that, that would be like a mantra that he would use every day. And I'd be like, why is he, I even mentioned to one of my friends, why does he always say that? You know, well, duh, now I know. And because of his religious, because he's a, he's a son of a preacher, man, the only one who could ever reach me. So there were certain attributes about his life that he was living that was in conflict with his behavior. And so in my opinion, my father's not here now to defend himself. He was ashamed. And so it was a secret because he had been divorced by that time from my mother. And why would it be a problem for us to meet? Or for him to say, well, I got another son. Whatever. Um... I don't know if he thought that we just, I mean, I, I have no idea. So to find this out, to have a, a young man as my little brother, pretty much practically the same age as my kid, my daughter, I'm sorry, I don't got no kid, the same, the, the same age, is kind of like, wow. So a lot of y'all saw the, con- uh, the conversation we were having until I ended up uh, saying, okay, listen, Here's my email. Why don't you hit me up here? Because I can see the comments coming from. <laughs> this was probably one of the uh, most active uh, uh, um, vlogs that I have, because it was it was a lot of conversation circled around this particular uh, situation, and I guess the only way he could reach me was through my page. And 
of course, she said it right out there on my page, and we had this conversation right on the page because I got nothing to hide. And, um, you know, in fact, I'm, my father is not no mouth, like I said again before, and it's not a prayer book. And so as I tread lightly through this situation, I want y'all feedback because there's some things <laughs> that, um, you know, he needs to know because what he does know, some of it is not even true. So I aim to walk in truth. And maybe right now, like I said, it may be not my time. But once the DNA is complete and I find out that this young man is my brother, then I think I have the right. I think I have the I I'm compelled um, to tell him certain things because some of those characteristics might lie in you. And um keep a watch on them. Keep keep your thumb on your pulse. And that way you can always do self inventory because that's what I try to do. Being away, being around all those damn religious people, the first thing I tried to do when I got up out of that dogma and began to make records and began to travel the world was to keep my thumb on my pulse. Okay, because I, as I began to branch out, I began to see more and more truth, and I realized that uh uh. My father, uh-uh. My granddaddy, uh-uh. All y'all. And so, of course, I was um, the devil incarnate. But with all that being said, I want to make sure I give this young man the fairest uh, explanation and the fairest description that I can give him about a man that I love very much, who was in, who was fallible, who had a lot of flaws, um, but at the end of the day, he's still my dad. And uh, I want to know what y'all think about that. Um, have you ever been in a situation where somebody came to you years later and talking about you, my family member, and you don't know how to handle it because everything that was presented to you was so under a religious cloak? Yeah. And so you wonder where the truth was because you had to go through a concerted effort to hide certain things. And I don't really think it was even worth all that. I don't know. That's just my opinion. You tell me what y'all think. And uh, do y'all think I should go forward with this? Um, because, like I said, I'm 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 too old. I don't have any <laughs> desires to uh, meet and greet him. But I do have a. Uh, I'm compelled, again, to tie up some loose ends for him. Tell me what y'all think. I've been on here long enough. I don't want to ramble. So, and if you in that situation or you ever been in that situation, leave it in the comments section. Let me know. Okay, y'all, I'll talk to you later. In the meantime, stay safe, stay loved, and love somebody. <laughs>